All right, so once we have positioned our partner on the bed or massage table, depending on what we have, it's important to place them face down. Because even though the plantar fascia can be worked on face up, this way we achieve that both the calves and the plantar fascia, all the foot muscles, are a little more relaxed. So, this position is the ideal one. If we have a bolster, we can place a bolster under them. We can fold clothes, we can do anything like that and put a bolster under them. If we don't have another option, if we're going to take their feet off the table, because we have a massage table, I recommend raising the height of the table. What we want is to have a height at which we are comfortable, roughly the height between our hips and our waist. It's going to be one of the best heights for you to be comfortable. Before we start, it's very helpful to compare one side with the other. See what differences we find between one foot and the other. If there's more tension, if there's less tension. So, we can palpate all that musculature we call the plantar fascia. Compare one side, compare the other, and that way we can get an idea more or less of what we have under our hands. Once we've made that comparison, ideally we do it without cream so we don't slip, so we can apply the necessary force. Now the ideal thing is, once we've done the palpation, to get our cream ready to work on the plantar fascias. To work on the feet, it's very useful to have a cream that has a slightly oilier base. Or just grab oil because it's a foam that tends to be a little drier. So generally we need a little more cream or a cream that has a more oily base. As I was saying, we take the cream, the cream is very cold. We can warm it up a bit with our hands, so we don't let it cool down, not to give our patient that shock. I'm going to raise the table a bit because otherwise I won't reach. And from here we're going to start with that manoeuvre I was telling you about. We're going to start with superficial strokes. These superficial strokes will serve us to make a first contact, to start spreading the cream all over the feet, so that our partner gets used to our touch. And if the person is very ticklish, which can happen, then we'll see which areas are a little more sensitive on the soles of the feet. Be careful not to make strokes too superficial, because this can indeed cause a bit more tickling. We're not applying much force, but we are using a very broad contact to, as I said, Minimize the risk of our partner getting ticklish. We're going to cover the entire sole of the foot and little by little we're going to start deepening. We're going to make those passes a little deeper. In the case of the plantar fascia, we can work in two ways. We can work from the highest area, the heel, the calcaneus, towards the lowest part, which are the metatarsals or vice versa from the metatarsals upwards. So, you can try to see which way you're more comfortable with. In this case, I'm going to start making slightly deeper passes with my thumbs along their entire plantar fascia, reaching to the calcaneus. In this case, since I have fairly large hands and my partner has slightly smaller feet, practically I, using just my thumbs, can cover the entire plantar fascia. If you have a person or you have smaller hands, you can use the whole palm of your hand to make those passes. So, we're making deep passes, looking for areas where there's a little more tension. Generally, these areas where there's more tension tend to be in the arch of the foot. So, we're going to make those deeper passes along the entire plantar fascia to the calcaneus. Once we've made several passes all over the sole, we can knead. We're going to knead with our knuckles. It's a maneuver that on the sole of the foot is very pleasant but we have to do it with a little force so that the relaxation of the plantar fascia musculature is really noticeable. 
I'm going to try to cover the entire sole of the foot. I'm going to make movements with my knuckles as if they were a rolling pin that are rotating. So, I'm going to need from proximal to distal, from distal to proximal, covering the whole area, the middle, the lateral edge. We're going to try, as I said, to knead the entire sole of the foot, all of it. If there's a point that's a little more painful, we can release a bit of tension, but ideally we apply a pressure that's uniform, meaning we're using more or less the same pressure all over our plantar fascia. We're going to look for those points also on the more medial edge, that is, on the inner edge of the plantar fascia, next to the calcaneus bone. Where there tend to be points where there's more pain, more discomfort, a little more load. So, with these points, we can stop a little. We pause and do the movement on those points. We can continue kneading and combine with the previous maneuver. We knead and make deep passes. We look to relax all that musculature. And we combine it with kneading. This way, what we're going to do is combine these two maneuvers for practically our whole treatment. We can use, as I said, these two maneuvers And, at some point, when we find a point where we notice there's more tension, or our partner tells us it hurts a little more, in this case we can do that compression I've talked to you about in other videos as well, that we use very often. So, I have a point here where there's a little more tension, and what I'm going to do is a compression. I can do the compression with just my thumb, or, if I need to go a little deeper, I can do that compression, and, over it, I'm going to reinforce it with my opposite hand. This way, I can apply a little more force there, I have it, and I compress. I maintain the compression, I have to see or feel. Rather, if the tension is gradually decreasing, I maintain that compression and relax. Since this maneuver is a little more intense, I can do a more superficial maneuver right after to release tension, to relax it. I'm going to start releasing. Remember always that the ideal, when we're doing a massage, is to combine the maneuvers. No, if I use a maneuver that's a little more uncomfortable, then a maneuver that's more pleasant afterwards. Because if in the end we're constantly pressing, constantly causing pain, the musculature becomes a little defensive. So we don't want this either. It is true that, at some moments, we're going to use a little more force to do some compression maneuver. I have another point. I'm going to compress, I'm going to apply force, I'm going to press, I maintain it, and after maintaining the compression for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, I'm going to release and move. With this, what we're doing is looking to oxygenate the area. I'm going to send more oxygen to it, I press and release, 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 I press and release. With this, what we're doing is playing a little with circulation and oxygenation. Think that oxygen reaches our body through the blood in these regions. Then, when I send more blood or less blood, what I'm doing is playing a little with the oxygenation of the tissues. I'm going to knead again with my knuckles. I'm going to cover more area. I'm going to go towards the metatarsals. From here, I make those circular movements with pressure to release this whole area. And with other maneuvers that encompass the whole foot, I'm going to look for another point. Now I'm going to go to the lateral edge and, once I have it, I'm going to compress and release. Again, depending on how long I want to make my massage, I would be combining these maneuvers for more or less time.
I, not to extend much further, I'm going to finish my massage. I'm going to gradually release the pressure. Remember always, we start from less to more, less tension, more tension, and we'll finish the opposite from more tension to less tension. So, I'm going to make those deep strokes again all over the sole of the foot, and again, I'm releasing tension, and I'm going to shallow strokes, which are the same ones I started with. To finish my massage, I can do a little mobilization of the metatarsal bones. No, not metacopples, which are in the hand, metatarsals. I release a little, I can move the toes a little, I can flex them, I can extend them. And to finish, I'm going to do a combined stretch. So, from here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open their sole of the foot, I'm going to bring their toes towards extension the foot, the ankle, towards flexion, and from here, I stretch the entire plantar fascia. I maintain for a few seconds and relax. And with this, we would finish our plantar fascia massage. One of the things I recommend is, if you have one, well, you're working with a person, you're giving a massage to a person who usually has a lot of discomfort in the plantar fascia. What I also recommend is that you work not only the plantar fascia, but also work the calf, okay, because they're very related. The calves come through here, the plantar fascia comes through here, and they converge here at the Achilles tendon and at the calcaneus. So, when I have a lot of discomfort in the plantar fascia, if I also relax the calves, I'm going to have many more benefits.